If you find that you're someone who secretly has this rage about other people because you're always getting screwed or the short end of the stick, then this video is for you because chances are your relationships are often one-sided. What's up you guys, Alex Hine here over at Modern Health Monk. So before we jump into this video, I've put together a free journaling worksheet to reflect on whatever your dream life is and what you wanna build. It's the first link right below this video and we'll go through some concrete exercises for designing your dream life going forward. So check it out right below this video. Now the first sign that your relationships, whether they're love or personal, are always one-sided is that in general, you feel like you're anxious and you're the chasing one. Now it may be in, in romance where you always feel like you're on edge, like you have this fear of losing somebody. Or even in business, where you feel like, again, you're chasing them down. You're always doing the work. You're always have this kind of feeling inside of you that it's whatever they're giving you is not enough and that you are the one in pursuit. Chances are that it is a one-sided relationship, whether it is love or friends or business. The second sign is that you're the one usually starting the conversation. Now the conversation and romance could be, we have a problem, can we work on this or at least talk about it? It could be something as simple as, this is what's bothering me, can we talk about it? In friendship, it could literally be, you're the one always asking the other person to hang out. And it's always you reaching out, always you being like, what are we doing this weekend? It's always you being like, hey, want to grab dinner? It's always you. And you're like, when are they going to reach out? It doesn't really feel like it's two-way street. The third sign is you're the one who's growth-oriented or getting better. So very often in relationships, you'll have one person who's always getting better and one person who maybe isn't. And certainly in romantic relationships, it tends to be a one-sided relationship when you tend to see one person, let's say the girl, who's always like, let's do this, babe, let's try this new thing, let's get this new food, let's go to this restaurant, or specifically growth-oriented, let's do a class, let's do a challenge, let's do something that's unique and growth-oriented and getting better, and if you're always bringing up the growth, chances are it's one-sided, and you're the one who's carrying the team. That could also be in business or in friendship, where again, you always have to do the work effectively. You're always organizing, you're always bringing up the hard conversations, you're always, it's you who is always, in other words. Now another sign that your relationships are one-sided is that you value what people say and do, but they don't. In a romantic relationship, this can purely be that, you know, your girlfriend said that she loves when you do this, and so you do it a lot. But when you say, I love when you do this, she doesn't do it a lot. That's also one-sided, because she's taking you for granted, for example. Or in friendship, it could be, you know what? We always go to your part of town, which is like 20 or 30 minutes away. Can we go to my part of town for dinner one night? And 90% of the time, you're driving 30 minutes to where that person lives because it's more convenient for them. So that is one-sided, right? They're thinking more about their own needs than yours. And again, this bleeds into my last point, which is that they are primarily making decisions from their own needs and not the needs of other people. So if you find that people are prioritizing where to go to dinner, low, geographically, what to eat for dinner because it's what they want, or price point, super cheap or very expensive because it's what they want to do and not what other people want to do, or where to go on vacation or when to go on vacation or what to do during the weekend. It's always what they want. Instead of you, your relationships are probably one-sided. So these signs are probably familiar to you if this is happening in your life but what do you actually do about it? The first thing I would say is, whether it's romantic or it's personal, just being aware of attachment styles is very useful. So there's a book called Attached, that's one of the more modern popular books on attachment theory. And one thing I would like to say is that many of us fall into this kind of anxious avoidant trap, which is where people who are more anxious are more prone to people pleasing, and people who are avoidant don't really give a shit about people pleasing. And so very often, these two types end up being paired because the anxious is trying to get something from the avoidant and the avoidant is trying to get away from the anxious person. So it could purely be your boss is avoidant and wants to be alone to get things done and you want a lot of feedback or a lot of advice or something to do. Please tell me do this, what should I do? You need advice. The person wants to be left alone. So it creates this ancient avoidant dynamic. Romantically, the ancient avoidant, avoidant is a cliche. The sweet girl that's dating the asshole guy is a classic anxious avoidant match where he doesn't want that much intimacy, she craves deep intimacy, so the more he pulls away, 
the more anxious she gets and chases. And it creates an unhealthy dynamic where both people are ultimately not fulfilled and certainly do not create any healing or any psychological empowerment or evolution. So understanding where you are regarding attachment style affects you both personally and professionally. Now, the second thing is being aware of self-confidence. Because for example, people with lower self-confidence, a lot of the time, tend to be more pleasing than people with high self-confidence. Unfortunately, because a lot of people with high self-confidence don't feel like they have to fit in to be liked. They don't feel like they need to be liked. And frankly, they are more likely to be assertive and do what they want, as opposed to feeling anxious and wanting to fit in and please and caring what other people think. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one correlation, but very often, a person with a strong sense of self, with a secure attachment style, doesn't strongly care what other people think. And so they're more free to live and do what they actually want, which will lead to you getting really more of what you need in your personal life and your professional life. So you're a lot less likely to tolerate bad behavior if you have healthy self-esteem. And that's really the bottom line for self-esteem. But in my opinion, the bottom line is always gonna be the same. If you feel like you're someone who's not getting what they want, and certainly someone who's not being prioritized, then chances are there are a lot of things to be aware of. It could be all the other person, could be all you, or realistically some combination of the two. So what I think is the most important thing is always the same, which is always to be working on yourself in every quadrant of life. Because the more you upgrade your skills, your mindset, your finances, your fitness, the more you're always collectively working on yourself, the more you're going to be a desirable person, whether that is in the boardroom or that's in the bedroom. And the more desirable you are, the more other people will respect you and admire you and admire and listen to what you say and what you do. So the bottom line being that people are more inclined to pay attention to you and therefore respect what you're saying instead of devaluing it. So those are the three things I'd recommend if you find that a lot of your relationships are one-sided always looking in and self-evaluating and seeing what you can work on. All right, guys, that's what I have for today. Check out the journaling worksheet below this video, and I'll see you soon.